reflect the views of the creators, hosts, or that of Cryer Media or their partners. The show may cover sensitive topics and information and discuss triggering yeah, issues. Emily. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Nice to see you. Why does that intro cut off so fast? Why doesn't it keep going? Did you do that? I don't know. Is that you? Uh, no, I didn't. Did you I have didn't something to do it. with that? Did you wreck that? No, I don't no. think you did. Welcome to the show. My name is Dean. That is uh, Lachlan Cross. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey buddy. I have, I have an announcement that I just I want to make quickly before we get going, because I want to get into our conversation with Emily. We got lots to talk about. Emily from Muse. This is like relationship. We're getting we're digging deep today. I'm actually going to talk, also talk about the solar eclipse today. A little bit of yeah. that. We're going to talk about when it's time, fellas, when it's time to just shave it, shave your head. I got some really solid advice for men out there today, and we're going to talk about fetishes. Yeah, you're good. Because uh, it's fetish okay. week at Muse Massage Spa. And I just, I read about some fetishes yesterday. I need some explanation. So if you're a fetish person, kink person, today's your day. And, as, and if you're an eclipse person and a bald person. Today's your today's day. day. <laughs> today's your day. Oh, also. Yeah. Uh -huh. And this is a tax announcement. I'm going to play Great. this, and then I'm going to tell you the announcement afterwards, uh, okay? All right. Correct. And that was really Precisely. the impetus for this version of Kevin J. Johnson, correct? Precisely. You nailed it. I got it. Not bad. There huh? you are. How do you, how do you like that? Yeah, how do you like you a very Sorry. popularized version of your life. And, right and I am the kind of guy, Dean, I'm not going to get into fist fights. I'm not going to lose my cool and throw stuff across the room. I right. took my frustration and channeled it into something. At least I thought it was positive. Yeah. Did, you not, were... did you not get arrested for a couple of altercations during COVID? Uh, one, two, uh, 21 times. <laughs> Just a couple. But, but they, they weren't altercations. Uh, I'll... Okay. Correct. All right. Was... So, uh, by the way, we found out yesterday. And if yeah. you get a chance, go listen to the Kevin J. Johnston Bananas. podcast. It, it's it it's was not, fucking bananas. It was one of my it, favorite it interviews is, of all time, by the way, because he's crackers. Yeah. What are it, you saying? It is not what you think it is. No. Uh, you have an expectation right now. You're thinking about this guy because you kind of know him. He hung out with Chris Sky, and then you got Dean, and then you throw me into the mix, and then you put this guy, Kevin, on a podcast, and Spin everyone goes, I know what this is. I know exactly what this is, no, you don't. and you're all wrong. You need to go listen to that podcast. And next week, Kevin J. Johnston will be joining the Cryer Media Network for a weekly podcast no, he teaching won't. you how to do your taxes. <laughs> ah, well done. Nice announcement. Way to, way to hit go. it off the top. Yeah, we, we interviewed Kevin J. Johnston. What are Johnson we paying, yesterday. Kevin? Uh, nothing. We're not paying him anything. He's not coming out of the network. So Kevin has been arrested 22 times. For everything from like uh, racially assaulting people to not showing up for court dates, he's on the run. It, it, dude, he's been one of the funniest stories during the pandemic. Like that story of him, like escaping Canada, claiming political asylum in the states, <laughs> hiding in awesome. a snowbank with frostbite, almost freezing to death in Butte, Montana. <laughs> he's like, and then they're like, "Get the fuck out of here!" And they sent him back to Canada. He, sent him he was jail time anyway. He was and the funny part of that conversation was he got picked up by Border Patrol. <laughs> And he got taken to the to the uh, to the to the police station. Yeah. And he goes, I don't know what they were doing, man. It took him forever. <laughs> he couldn't figure out what to do with me. Ah, that's because no one ever tries to escape Canada. <laughs> it's funny, right? You can get yeah. into a room with somebody, you go to a dinner party, and you can have a conversation with somebody, and you can and you can figure something out about them and their belief structures, yeah. and it's completely polar opposite to you. And you can still get along and you can still feel like that guy maybe lives on the same planet as you. That is not the case with Kevin. No, Kevin not has at a all. very different idea of the world around him. Mm -hmm. And I am pretty sure is living on a completely different planet and alternative universe from the rest of mankind. But <laughs> the interview was very entertaining. Yeah. So that's the thing, right? Everybody's out there doing these gotcha interviews with people from different cultures and trying to get, well, we you said know, this gotcha. and what about that? I gotcha. Well, you did this back then. I was like, I gotcha. Like it's gotcha Don time. Lemon. So Elon stupid. Musk. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is the dumbest interview ever. Um, and we let Kevin get himself for like an hour yesterday, yeah. right? Like we, 
We just like we just kept giving them rope. Here's some more. Here's some nah, more. Nah, that's no, no. We didn't even do that. It wasn't. Yeah, we did. I gave him uh, a ton of no, rope. no. We had a good conversation hard. with him. There was some common ground. Very mm. little, but there was a bit. You know what the common ground was? I think he's hilarious, and he was having a great time trying to tell me that he was being serious, not ta- evading taxes down in Costa Rica, helping other people do it for the next like couple of years because he's just fucked. So that's the common ground that we share. Tax it's- tips with Kevin. That's the name of the show. I just sent. Remember we just yesterday? He's like, he's like, I sent my. I'm gonna bring it, Emily. Emily from News. Let's bring you in for this. M, baby, sister. Hey, love you. how are you? Hey, um, you massage spot. Good, good, good. Did you see the interview with Kevin J. Johnson yesterday? Did you see that? that uh... I, I watched a few minutes and I turned it off. To be honest, I couldn't. You got to go back, Em. You got to go so, back. So you remember him, right? You remember him from the pandemic? Uh, I do. I do. Yeah, like absolutely awful hate speech about Muhammad <laughs> Faki from uh, from Paramount. Yeah, and there was, was told to retract it. He doubled down, and then he started punching people over soap and so different aisles, bugging <laughs> guys about his fucking big, just, he was one of those guys, one of those agitators. Just for a week. Yeah. So we talked to him yesterday and he told us a story about how he tried to escape Canada. I almost pissed my pants laughing because he almost I remember died. talking about yeah. that on this yeah. podcast. <laughs> Dean, it, it, uh, it escaped him, his memory of it, but yeah. Interesting yeah, duck. Again, not. I'll, I repeat, <laughs> Emily did exactly what everybody is thinking about that podcast yeah she turned it in said ah this is this i know what this is and turned it off it you have to watch it it's yeah yeah. (laughs) okay um, i want to take control here um, Uh and i know we got lots to talk about but dean and i have had a conversation emily over the last (laughs) i'd say couple of weeks about okay dean becoming a middle-aged snack. Okay. We have t-shirts here. I'll show you the mm-hmm. t-shirt. Why it says, is I can't help it. I'm up. just there a middle-aged is. snack. Yeah. Yeah. You had it. <laughs> it was good. It was nice. It's a black t-shirt. I think it comes in white. I would never wear a white t-shirt though. Just in it, case someone starts spraying water around and wants to have a wet t-shirt contest with Dino. I'm not into it. Okay. All right. So it. go to the Dean <laughs> store. You can buy that shirt for yourself or maybe somebody in your family. Make a great gift. Father's Day, just around the corner. Now, mm. I want to ask you this, Emily. Okay. It's From not news. a yes or no question. What is it about Dean? And I'm not talking looks either. That I, I want to dig a little bit deeper because I have a theory and I'm wondering if you have a similar theory to me. What is it about Dean that, that screams is, big sex? Is that what you're saying? That <laughs> turned him into this middle-aged snack because he has numerous women like <laughs> DMing him, right? Right. <laughs> all 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 un, unreplied to, by the way. I'm very I, happy yes. man. Yes. And you showed your girlfriend. Absolutely. You showed your girlfriend Right. Totally. So it, there's not we're not hiding anything here. No. But what is it about right. what is it about Dean? Because I got a theory, but I want to hear you, Em. I, I'm almost nervous what your theory is. <laughs> I am too. Right? Like yeah. to me, I mean you're you're very handsome and when it turns to the physical, but you're funny. Comedy is always attractive to women. You're intelligent, you're controversial. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves a bad boy. <laughs> But you're a bad boy with a good heart. And I think that makes it like. Mm. <laughs> is that the thing? Is that's the secret sauce is to for women is you got to be a bad boy with a bit of a big heart. Like I'm a big softy. I'll cry uh, watching puppy videos or like army vets coming home to see their kids. I'm like, I'll buy, I'll ball. I all those no ones kill me. Yeah. But all those I also things have no problem. I, I got no problem it. taking a strip off of people too, right? Like or, or setting mm-hmm. the record straight, but I only go after. But is that what women are into? At this age, we're roughly the same age. You're younger than me. I'm not much younger than me. Just want to say that. Okay. Yeah, we're from the same school, right? Women are <laughs> right. just, just like badasses. They're like, oh, I just want a badass. But it's yeah. involved, hasn't it? Women want a badass with a sense of social responsibility. Maybe some <laughs> social responsibility <laughs> and it's isn't an asshole. I'm putting ass. that t-shirt out. Jesus, Dean. <laughs> say that again, Em. What do you say? What do you say? <laughs> We like we like a little bit of of like both in the sense that you could be an asshole to everybody else, just not to us. Like the one you love is the one that you should be soft for. The okay. most. Yeah. Both of you are so wrong because be I the see bad how, boy, how but excited don't, don't be Dean bad, is. You know. 
Yeah. I see how excited <laughs> Dean is to agree with everything that Emily said. I mean, okay. he's a silver fox. I've told him that already. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not disputing this. Hang Dean's... on, let's just check me out for a second. That's <laughs> look at this. Look okay. This. No, when I when I this first is, told him this... I took a screenshot and sent it to him of himself, and I was like, look at the silver fox right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get a lot of nice messages from him. I'm like, oh you <laughs> saucy lady. You. Um, look at you. Emily, you knew you knew fat dean, right? Like you knew bigger dean, big fat sweaty dean, big fat radio. I never dean. thought you were fat and sweaty. Oh, I was. He was. You were just dad bod, Dean. <laughs> oh, it was like dad, super dad bod. When you're 300 <laughs> pounds plus, you're not dad bod. That ship sailed. Okay, hold dad on, bod, Dean. Listen, I, 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 thought, really it was, I thought it was the weight loss. That's why you I guys I was really curious. don't want me to you should, talk no, about my theory you here. Should Emily, have seen you're wrong. The look, I got in law <laughs> blogs yesterday. I'm, from I'm getting my theory. A really cute 72 year old lady. By the okay. way, listen, okay. big, big dick know. energy comes across no matter what the circumstances are. Yeah. <laughs> it could be 72 in the grocery store. <laughs> exactly. Okay. That's Hang on. Dick energy. Hang on. What? Let me, let me, hear this. I, yeah. my theory, I, I'm telling you my theory. It's <laughs> happening. All right. Emily, there's nothing wrong with what you said, and I agree with it at all. Okay. Uh, but I think there's something else, and this is something that I've learned about Dean. Right. Let's just say... I fly to Ontario and I hit the airport. I got a mic in hand and I'm going to do some streeters. I'm going to do some interviews. I'm going to, I'm going to find out if anybody still remembers who Dean Blundell is. And we go okay. around, I go around and I find a couple of people that remember Dean Blundell from the edge days. And I ask him, give me an opinion of Dean Blundell. What do you think he's like? No one is going to say what I've learned about Dean in the last couple of years, and this is where I think the middle-aged snack thing has come into play. I think <laughs> the world can be broken into two categories of people. Okay. You got pleasers and you got people that take care of themselves. And then there's just this amazing spectrum in the middle. I had to teach myself to care about other people because I I'm over here. I'm a take care of yourself kind of guy. And over the okay. years, being self-aware, I have figured out that you can't just fucking plow through life just thinking about yourself and disregarding everybody else's opinions. But I, I was very good at it. And something happened, some childhood trauma, whatever the fuck it was, that set right. me up like that. And I, I, before knowing Dean as well as I would have said, he's in this camp with me. I'm way better now. Like I, I go out of my way to try to make sure people are happy, but it was something I had to teach myself. Okay. Dean, no one would put him in this pleaser camp. He is a pleaser. He really does care about other people and what other people think. Ding, ding, and ding. And I think when you're a pleaser, I don't think it's anything to do with silver fox i don't think it's anything to do with big dick energy <laughs> yes, when is. you're a pleaser both male and female you attempt to try to get people to like you and enjoy the th and, and enjoy being around you that's dean and i think that's why because he's really comfortable with himself he's not struggling with his his alcoholism he's in a good place he's gotten back to that true sense of who he was when he was on the air, he didn't play that fucking guy. He played this. I'm the fucking best guy in the world. I'm the best jock in the world. You guys well, all need to follow me. Get on the horse. But he, in actual fact, he wasn't that guy. So now he's being true to himself, and it is very appealing to the opposite sex. That's my fucking theory. Nailed it. We can move on. <laughs> you lot. M, what do you think? You think I 100% disagree. <laughs> Really? A hundred percent. Like it's almost it like there. you, you, like, you were using some forward. of the right buzzwords, but it's your timeline's backwards. People pleasers, that's not a sense of I know myself and maturity and, and self-acceptance and growth and all that. That's almost like a, a weakness. You're overcompensating, caring too much what people think. I don't think Dean gives a fuck what people think, to be I honest. Think he's really good at letting <laughs> Right. Uh, but when he was on air back in the edge days, you played harder than I think your heart is. But I think that was also part of the environment and the industry that you're in. There's you put on a persona just like everybody else has to in their 
career and it's it's yeah. almost an armor in a way right because it protected the soft side of you and you can get lost in that sauce really easily and then you cleared the fog mm -hmm. and now you don't have to people please at all you don't give a shit <laughs> no, i just want you guys Emily's to know right. you're wrong even though I spend <laughs> way less time there's my Emily mic drop moment oh <laughs> emily i just want you to know both of you what? we can continue on i'm gonna be okay, okay. let me let me do this no, for 15 minutes and it's okay that you guys are wrong. <laughs> It'll be fine from this point on. You're, but you know what? You touched. It's like your theory was the rim job of theories. Yeah, it was you, almost just you not were around the hole. Yeah, but you weren't in the hole, right? Like you're kind of you're I'm poking around. Dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like put it know, in. You, Help me. Put it, put it in. in. <laughs> no, that's mass cheek. No, that's the wrong. That's a taint. You, you were like in and around the wrong taint hole. region of the <laughs> of the conversation. <laughs> So here's my theory. This is my theory. Emily, you're hundred percent right. So when I was at the edge armor, great word, I could create this thing, right? This thing was what I was getting paid. I'll just say it millions of dollars for mm -hmm. be this thing. And I'm like eh, seven years in, I'm like, I think I'm, I think I'm having some like mental issues, man. And they're like, don't worry about it. We'll get you a counselor. And I'm like, I don't like being this guy. Don't worry about it. We'll get you a therapist. You got to keep doing what you do. If you don't do what you do, mm -hmm. you're not going to have a job. And I'm like, all right. Blah, 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 blah. And I, hey, don't get me wrong. I was really proud of what I did. Very successful. I had a nice time. It was a lot of fun. It was a heritage more, all that other shit. Just right. I had no fucking idea who I was at the end of it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who I was. You get out of radio. You don't know who you were. And you can say the same thing about you being younger, being in your industry. You're like, mm -hmm. you know, there's one thing to make money. And for that to be your personality or for that to be who you are or for you to be something to everybody else. But yeah. I cannot imagine knowing how comfortable I am to be myself. And Emily, you're hundred percent right because I do not give a shit about people. And I am a people pleaser, but only the people I love. That's it. Anybody else can suck a dick. <laughs> Sorry. That's just my language. Everybody else is out there. Right. And if I love you, man, you get all my attention. You get all my love. But if I don't love you, that's when Fat Dean comes out and he goes, who are we fighting? Who, who wants it, right? But even in that is different because I don't mm -hmm. care what anybody does with their lives anymore. I used to be overly concerned because I thought my worldview was everybody's worldview because when you're young and dumb, you're just young and dumb, right? Now right. I know that I don't know everything, can't control anything, only control myself, know who I am. And you're okay Let being tell on you. the wrong side of somebody else's opinion. That that 100%. still doesn't oh, disprove yeah. my theory. It still no, doesn't it doesn't. My like I said, you were close. You're in the taint sort of mm -hmm. rim region of the idea. I just, I, I've been like getting to know you and it's funny when I get hauled out for being associated with you, I'm like, you yeah. have no idea who that man is. Right. And, and it, mm -hmm. it's happened to me too. I've had a similar situation in my career, right. Yeah. Where people, if you say my name out loud in a room, Mm -hmm. Right, people that just know me from reputation, you're going to get an opinion of me that's not favorable. No, right? Well, it but, depends on who you ask. Same. But but that <laughs> but that goes. But Em and I'm let me ask you this: You and I have known same. each other for 20 years. Really, yeah. kind of off and on 20 years. You were very different 20 years ago. I can't help it. I'm just a Facts. middle aged snack. T-shirts available <laughs> in the Dean Blundell show. That's my shirt. It's all about me. I want a shirt, by the way. <laughs> I'll get you one. Okay. Um what do you because here's the thing back then i was like i gotta be a force i just gotta go do mm -hmm. this stuff very different now that i'm 51 25 so take me back 25 years how you're different now as a human being than yeah. you were then dancing for the raptors too right what were you doing true, true. <laughs> yeah 25 years ago i was a college student way too young mm -hmm. um was dancing for the Raptors and still was a competitive figure skater at the time too. I was a national figure skater as well. So I was, I was overly scheduled, super busy, very fit and constantly tired. <laughs> Always but I was, I was a softie. I was a small town girl. I had no street smarts whatsoever. I was the book smart girl kind of lost in the big city all of a sudden. Um, I mean, just simple things like going downtown just to a game was like i grew up in thornhill when thornhill was farmland so <laughs> it was very very different mm -hmm. <laughs> um yeah i was i was a softie i was a pushover i was mm -hmm. i was overly concerned about what people think did way too much for loved ones cried at the drop of a hat i, I was just very soft yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that, that you know you go through me 
Yeah, I know. She's such a sweetheart. Um, and one yeah. of my favorite people in the <laughs> world, too. So bright. But you, you like everybody else, right? You don't know yourself at like 23 to th- even 35 or 40. And everybody. 40 and on, that's so I good. Don't, I don't know <laughs> if you know yourself at 50. Well, I, it's, it's always better. a work in progress. But, but my point is this, is that what I thought back then was that everybody had to be subject to me, right? Ooh, now what I right. know, which is different, is I get to enjoy my life experience with other people. Yes. As opposed to, I'm going to force myself into this situation. I'm going to be something to these people. I have this, because you don't know yourself. You don't know who you are. Mm-hmm. And I say this all the time. If I could go back and slap Fat Dean across the face at like 28. I miss Just that. like, hey, dude, here's what you need to know. Here's what you need to know. <laughs> you need to know how to respond to people properly. You need to learn how to deal with whatever trauma you had in your life. And you need mm-hmm. to accept people for who they are. And you need to protect people who need protecting. And you need to give your privilege away to those who need it most. Had I gone back to myself in a time machine yeah, and said that to myself at 28, mm. I'd probably still be here because I'm an idiot. However, <laughs> um, I would have avoided so mm. much. No, and I would have avoided have. so much. If Yeah, I would have. If someone came to yeah. me and said, If hey, I went back way, and told 28-year-old Locke a bunch of rules... He'd go, fuck you. He'd beat the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going back and listening. I have zero regrets. Yeah. <laughs> what I went through shaped me. Yeah. I like who I am. I, no, I no, no. That's it's not fair. dude. Yeah. And that's the thing is that you get to the point where you look at the journey, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. Back and all the things that you did where I admit to being an alcoholic and drinking too much, being a bad parent, all the things that you regret when you're at this age where you look back and you're like, there's some shit back there I need to deal with. There's some wreckage right. I got to deal with back there. Um, and you, when you're young, you don't realize maybe you don't have time for it, but it's those things where, to your point, Locke, and I'm glad you said it, that everybody looks back at now and you say, man, getting fired, I'm so grateful for it. The experience right. of it, struggling in those early days of you starting your business, M. I mean, are you at that point yet where you're like, you can look back and go as much as I hated that time in my life and how I didn't know Mm -hmm. myself, you know yourself now. And that's what that struggle in your life gave you. I wouldn't change a minute, a minute of it. Um, I've never believed in regret. I think it's a piss waste of time. Um, It's just never been part of my belief system and I don't subscribe to the theory. So I think I think there's something to be said for, I wish it didn't take me so long to learn certain lessons. Yeah. Could have shaved, mm-hmm. you know, three years off a few experiences there. <laughs> but but beyond that, uh, like, no, I, I'm exactly who I am and where I'm supposed to be because of all those things. It's it's strange when you get older and you get to, like, kind of reflect on that stuff. But it's ironic. I feel like humans don't pass that genetically on. Like, we don't learn our lessons to a way that we evolve like like permanently it becomes these sayings we have like youth is wasted on the young or if i knew then what i know now like like just generation after generation after generation after we just keep saying that shit why don't we just teach it like i have this theory that a turtle is born and knows where to go to the ocean right it doesn't need someone to tell it and if there's a danger on the way it genetically figures it out and knows to bypass you know whatever threat is around so that it has the best chance of living its little ocean life and mm. it doesn't sit there with the mother going oh if they only knew what i know <laughs> it doesn't happen that way humans listen, are almost resistant to physical yeah. evolution listen baby turtles you're gonna hate your life just stay in the sand it sucks that's the human perspective right <laughs> well, instead of just keep swimming <laughs> i have a little bit of a different theory i think that we actually negotiate our way through life. Be another rim job theory no, you're no, gonna no, catch the no, with this bad no. one I, listen right. i don't know what you guys are talking about rim job i fully penetrated my theory earlier and i'm going to fully penetrate this, this theory right. as well okay I hate us. Okay. okay now listen i think we go through life and listen I, i'm not suggesting you stop teaching your kids or or passing on your privilege or whatever it is you, you think you need to to do to, to 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 give back i don't think we share enough gratitude in this world and i don't think we knew do enough to give back um and that's kind of my journey that I'm on right now. Now, now, I think you have to try to guide people, especially your kids or whatnot. But they also, and I said this countless times, and it it, it also 
saved us a lot of time because I didn't really want to do the heavy lifting on the parenting side, but the kids are <laughs> going to fucking learn on their own. You just got to give yeah. them a the sort of guide like this way. Right. And you know what? Like I never, I never said to my daughters, you can't drink tonight. You can't do this. You know, the only, the only real hard rules we had, because in Alberta, um, there's, you know, there's too many people that think they're fucking chemists. So you're at a party and some guy hands you a pill that he made in his garage in Red Deer, right? Because he fucking took one year of chemistry. Garage Oxy? DIY yeah. Garage Oxy? That happens <laughs> I'm like, a just lot. Stay away from any fucking chemicals. Go yeah. drink, go make your mistakes, right? Do all that. You're gonna... You know, I think you know, we need to learn these things on our own. I well, think this is that this is the fucking point. stupid. That yeah. that's what we you know we got to plow through life. And Emily, you could give me all the advice in the world. I'm probably going to make the same mistake, right? Well, or you are right. So that's good. that's what I find ironic, right? Like yeah. if we could make certain struggles easier on the next generation, wouldn't we not want to? And most evolutionary um, survival skills are based around the path of least resistance, the least danger, right? Would you not want that for your kids or your third generation down? And we yeah. don't pass on those struggles um, and what we learn, we instead just pass on the limericks and the old wives' tales that go with it. I, it's I think funny it's how when you get older, though, those limericks and old wives' tales, to your point, like you, you look, life is a cliche when you get older. Like, easy right. does it. They all make sense. Uh, all you need is patience, right? <laughs> mm. Or like oh, those little things. Yeah, I know you hate that one too. I do too. I don't like anybody telling me that I got to be what? I got to be patient. How dare you tell me what to fucking do? We got to be on time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We gotta, yeah. We're all similar better. that way. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why we're self-employed. We can't work for other people. Be yeah. here at nine. How about go fuck yourself? How about you're fired? <laughs> um, but, yeah. you know, the, I would the, agree to a time and then not show up at that time because you didn't think it was actually going to, but you didn't want to say anything because you didn't want to. All right. Enough. Like, enough. Like, enough. Like, I know. I, know. That to me all the time. Well, I know because I know I can. So just relax. The trauma um, dump from this morning. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Um, so but, but the thing is, is that in our lives, in your life, right? In my life, we're talking. I knew we'd to get to at... my real trauma. Thank you guys. I You're feel welcome. way better. This yeah, has no been very helpful. You yeah, guys should charge for this. <laughs> well, we should. We're thinking about it. Um, but we make mistakes as people, right? As individuals, mm -hmm. the only way that I have ever learned from anything is during dealing with the consequences of a mistake that I've made. The hardest and, times, yeah. Yeah. And, and so when I go through, and I've been through a lot of therapy, I help guys with this stuff. Guys who get to that point in their lives where you've gotten to and I've gotten to at some point where you go, all right, my best effort brought me to this shithole. What do I do now? Right. I'm unhappy. I'm miserable. I'm this guy. I'm angry at people. I'm <laughs> shutting people out. My name's Locke. I mean, I didn't mean that last part. <laughs> but right, then listen. you say to yourself, well, well, hang on. And then you say to yourself, <laughs> what am I doing? What do I do if I'm unhappy? Right. And then you go get help. Which is what you should do, which is what everybody should do. You should go talk mm -hmm. to a professional. You shouldn't go, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to have a couple cocktails. Probably not a great idea. <laughs> do what you got to do. <laughs> Working uh, for me. Or I'm going to go talk to my buddy, Bert, who's a plumber, about what I'm going through mentally. No, Bert's not qualified. He's a pipe fitter and a plumber. You don't talk to him. You go get help. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but the biggest thing that I've realized, and the, this is the difference, it's the perception of my life. It's not my life itself right? It's how I look at dealing with these things. And because yes. now I know that in infinite struggle, in failure, some people call it failure, that failure is meant to test you, fail to test mm -hmm. it's science. That's how they, how they came up with electricity, light bulbs, medicine, all the really important shit. It is a standard work process that you are not exempt from in your own life. And what we do is we fatalize failure to the point where we're like, ah, fuck it. I don't even want to bother. I'm just going to hide under the covers. That is not good. And that is what happens until you change your perspective of what failure in your life really means and how important that failure is to you becoming the fucking rock star that you want to be. To my point. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very now, much. Uh, all I want to make I want to make a comment uh, and 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 listen this Then we can I get on to fetish week. Yeah. Okay. I don't want this to make it sound like I don't think it if you decide yeah. that you need therapy, go gangbusters. Like I, I'm mm -hmm. not anti-therapy from that perspective. 
I have the same feeling about religion or politics. If you want to vote one way, uh, I'm not going to pick my friends based on how they vote. I think if you are in a I religion do. and it's I your do. choice, you shouldn't you shouldn't be coming to my door to tell me I pick what my kind friends of religion. based on their religion too. Actually, so I'm, okay. I'm like, see, I don't, I don't. I could be in a room. I don't Just care a what politics one for me. <laughs> yeah. Politics one's a little harder to digest lately. Now, okay, now. I have to for me. It affects my life drastically. I, I Yes, that's fair. Um, again, perspective. We've been talking about this for the last like, mm-hmm. month. Perspective. It's interesting to hear where they come from and how they get to the, the decisions they make on a daily basis. No, for me, I am not going to therapy. Now, here's why. I learned good. a long fucking time ago that I probably... Have go. some kind of diag like you could probably sit down and diagnose <laughs> me with something. You know, you're just gonna undo everything <laughs> no, Emily and I no, just no, no. said for no, no, 30 listen, minutes. Listen, listen, this needs to be said it. out loud because there's a lot of people driving around listening to this right now, and yeah. they're in their truck and they need the opposite opinion of this. Listen, <laughs> listen, Jerry, if you're fucking okay with your life and who you are and you're happy and you're not a miserable sack of shit, give her. You fucking give her. Yes, exactly. That's a great word. I'm gonna steal that. Total give her. Don't worry. Oh, you I'm just said you. you're happy. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't happy. So I had to change my perspective and change my life. As you're different than everybody. Like, I'm, you're I'm different. You needed to get to that next step. You needed someone right. to pull you over the line. Even though you knew mm-hmm. where the fucking line was and you knew what the person was going to say the line was, you still needed to be grabbed by the dick and pulled along. There's a lot of people that pull their own dicks and they're fine. They get to that next level. That's true. I, if I may. Know, yes, please. Um, go ahead. All this dick pulling, we need someone without yeah, right. one. Thank you. I need a drink. You do. You really do. A drink and a joint. Yeah, yeah. Great. Some yoga. Let's stuff. do it. Um, no, I think I, I don't think it's about the therapy, but I think there are some people that get in resistance of growth because they do think they're happy. They do think they're fine. Mm. They think, well, if it's not broken, <laughs> don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there is, like Dean said, there's no exemption to the lessons that your soul is meant to learn in this lifetime. There's no way to get out of that. And you could choose to be a hamster, staying on a wheel, just running the same course, wondering, why does this keep happening to me? Or you can go through the hard shit to learn the lessons. And I'm convinced that once you learn a certain amount of lessons here, you don't need to be here anymore. So off you go to whatever you may believe is next. And so tools. you can make your tools. you can make yeah. your life really long. By staying on that hamster wheel and like denying what life keeps showing you yeah. in different circumstances over and over. Why does this keep? Because. But Emily, <laughs> no one's going to get to that point where they need to take that next step, whatever it means, unless they make that decision themselves. And that was what 100%. I was trying to do by helping Jerry out. Jerry, if he's ever going to get to a point where he stops drinking six beer in his garage every night and ignoring his right. family and his kids and t- tells him. Is, t- is your middle name Jerry? I have, No, it's Jay. <laughs> All right. Jerry, you're okay until you figure it out. You're Jerry. I'm Jerry. <laughs> I am way past Jerry. Jerry I'm and I could go over a beer or six. Garage. Yeah, I know. I yeah. know. Um, Emily, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 this is what I'm saying. Not only is she really good at talking about like existential issues and evolutionary psychology, it's fetish week <laughs> news, by the way. I just want to point that out. Um, can we go through some of this, please? You and I talk a little bit about fetishes mm-hmm. and kinks. Uh, Muse Massage Spa, one of our tremendous partners, uh, 1290 Finch Avenue West, uh, Canada's number one body rub parlor. And, and and sexologist, you got a podcast called Muse on the Mic. I encourage everybody to go and download the uncensored Patreon version as well, YouTube. Explain Fetish Week because it's not it's it's actually <laughs> Fetish Month, but you split it up in weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, I morning love that you glory. do this. What's that? <laughs> Put that back up. Morning Glory. Yeah, <laughs> you're there from nine to eleven. You save ten bucks. <laughs> I love it. Hey, in promo. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, Fetish Uh, Week of Muse, take us through it. What do you got going? What do you got cooking? I write all those, by the way, so that's my morning glory joke right there. (laughs) Was it you? I couldn't resist it. It was too cute. Um, Fashion Fetish is one of our most popular monthly promos that we do. We do it at least once a year, sometimes twice. 
and it's a different theme week each week, basically. And it goes off people's fantasies and fetishes and it goes across the board. This week we're doing off or uh, leather and lace this week. We've got office week. We've got a sports week. Mm-hmm. Um, we got we've done schoolgirl week we've done nurses and maids and 911 vibes we've done jeans week we do girl next door college co-eds cheerleaders you name it we'll just come up with it and the girls have so much fun can we talk about the 911 fetish too i i yeah yeah we did that after the pandemic it was awesome (laughs) we wanted to thank all the first responders because everyone got to dress up like firemen or police officers or nurses and the halloween costumes come out it's just a slut fest it's great (laughs) so you you paid tribute you paid tribute you didn't during the pandemic to first responders by yes, doing and all first responders week. got a discount too when they came in. It was amazing. Did some, did some first responders take you up on it? Do you have some people come in in uni and go, hey, listen, uh, just don't tell anybody I was here from the department? We have corporate accounts with unions. <laughs> I don't fuck around, team. If anyone has a large company that would like to arrange it, hit me up in my DMs on Twitter. Corporate account, a corporate account. So yeah. you have corporate yeah. accounts for certain unions that represent certain school boards, unions, <laughs> some fire stations, you name it. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Do you have any Catholic school board corporate accounts there? <laughs> do 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 do. <laughs> I love this world so much. It's so awesome. So much hypocrisy. <laughs> ah, you're killing me. Oh, uh, no, you're you're helping me. I am really happy Listen, to I that. come from a corporate sales background, so that's what I know. Ah, uh, I love you so much. Um, <laughs> so back you to punch fetish. cards, too, don't you? Back to fetish week. <laughs> We yeah, sell packages. We have repeat member programs. We have referral yeah. programs. We have all kinds of stuff. You got it all. If you want to get involved, listen, just a quick heads up. Uh, this is uh, one of the smartest business women I know. Her and Riley run an extremely successful organization and operation. So if you are looking to become a muse, you want to get into the business, you want to be an affiliate, hit Emily up. Go to the contact portion of their brand new webpage, musemassagespa.com, and check it out. Um, can I just ask you a couple more questions and, and not about Absolutely. the corporate accounts? I'll ask you about that <laughs> off the air where you'll tell me names and stuff. No, you won't. Cause you never, <laughs> um, you never do. Um, okay. So you've got, you've got leather and lace week. That's the first week of yeah. uh, April. Okay. So I get that. Uh, I think the next one is neon week. Do the lace. Is it neon week? That's the next one. What do we got? I think neon it's week? neon, like eighties vibes, anything that glows, black light. The girls are going to uh, set up their rooms with all kinds of lights and stuff. It's going to be really cute. Okay. Sports week. S- so sports, sports is gonna be players, week. coaches, referees, or cheerleaders. Yeah. Okay. Night but they get a snap. different promo each week too. <laughs> <laughs> so do women get dressed up in these things in during that week? Then yeah. that's the deal, okay, ladies. Yeah, this yeah week the girls is, are all in theme. All right. Yeah. All right. All theme girls. So the uh, first week of April is yeah. fetish week. If you're in the leather stuff, that's great. Morning glory. You can get in there. Just don't put a yeah. Habs jersey on any of them. Nobody yeah. will get a boner. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every single girl there has to wear a leaf uniform, or no yeah. one will get a rest. Oh, that's too much. One of my staff, well. one of my yeah. staff, had a client get up and leave a session when she admitted she was a leaf fan. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> the DJ's record screeched. He got up and he put on his pants. And I'm not going to be able to do stuff. this. He was stuck. Yeah, I have known men that like that. Guy. Hang on, there's a yeah. reason that <laughs> gentleman was at the spa that day. It's because he he was an Ottawa fan. It was predictable. <laughs> <laughs> he was like deal breaker. I'm out. Dude, could you imagine? Keep like, the money. I'm leaving. That much of a fucking hockey loser. Like we, I know a lot. It was of hilarious. Donkey. Hilarious. Could you imagine spending a couple hundred dollars to have a therapeutic uh-huh. massage with a beautiful woman? And you get there and you're like, you a hockey fan? And she goes, yeah, I'm a big Habs fan. And he goes, fuck this. Wow. And he puts his <laughs> I might be able to leave after that, too. Yeah. It was uh, hilarious. That it's is dying. unbelievable. Yeah. Well, I guess you're so gonna, you know, my advice to the girls is be sporty, but don't be sports specific or team specific because yeah. you don't want to piss people off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that money. Well, that's all right. placed in like football. Yeah, let's not do it. Yeah. <laughs> You a hockey fan? Are you? Sports donkeys, I'd tell you. 
Yeah, the it's worst rubbing touchers ever. <laughs> um, it's really they, fun. The clients love it. It's, it's yeah. fun when they like walk in, meet the girls, and see all the outfits. They're like, "Oh, you guys really did it!" They're like, "Yeah, they go all out." Yeah. Well, it's like it's like dress up and Cute. then some, right? You're like, right? okay, listen, it's if you fun. got an office fetish, it's like the week after. Yeah, the, the sexy fetish. secretary. Yeah, mm. yeah, you walk in, she's got her little skirt on, the glasses and stuff I, like Secretary that. I could get into. <laughs> I'd do that. I'd do secretary week. I yep. don't know if I'd do sports donkey week. <laughs> I would do leather and lace week. Don't know if I would do it. I couldn't do but, sports donkey week. There's no way. I was looking at some <laughs> other fetishes uh, that you'd Okay, what would you find? Um, I found some interesting ones. I found some interesting ones. What did ones. you find? Tell me, uh, tell me. Abrasion. Abrasion philia, it's called. It's a subcategory of BDSM that gets people feeling aroused by getting scratched. Makes sense. Do that one. <laughs> what week is that? I mean, that that would have certainly wouldn't be a theme week. It would more be like so and so now offers. <laughs> We're not going to do a whole week on that one. <laughs> but I can tell you where it stems from. What's that? It's amazing the things you find in childhood that could be hurtful but you find pleasurable like spanking for example right some kids don't necessarily cry when they skin their knees or get carpet burn or their mom scratches their back before bed and it always feels nice like depending on what kind of abrasion you're talking about it all stems from childhood that's bizarre. easy that's weird. easy no that's most Freudian. fetishes are developed in the first five years of your life all right is you sure that's that, not freud that he was on heroin sense. a lot yeah <laughs> A um, couple other ones that you should maybe consider. Uh, okay. <laughs> an esteemophilia. Uh, it's an, uh, an arousal to a person of extreme stature, a giant or a dwarf. So if you can get like a seven footer. Okay. <laughs> I know a little person. <laughs> <laughs> this one's interesting. Uh, climacophilia. It's an arousal to watching people fall down the stairs. That's hilarious. <laughs> It's that is hilarious. That's a <laughs> real <laughs> Some people sat around watching America's Funniest Home Videos way too much as a child, for sure. A friend of mine's <laughs> so mom they found Steve to... attractive. They, they went down a whole jackass route. Ridiculousness is recorded on their, their PDR. <laughs> look, at it. look at the picture that they comes with the explanation. Climacophilia. Uh, Arousal uh, to falling down the stairs. Guys like laying on the it stairs. Out. There's people yeah. up there watching just jerking it. Just boner. <laughs> I uh, I had a boss who used to every time someone died, like if you go to him and go, "Hey, I gotta get some time off," um, my my grandmother died. He burst out laughing, and you'd be like, "I swear to like God, child. he he couldn't oh, stop laughing if you." <laughs> so he was like. Anytime that's a, anybody that's asks, that's a disorder, you. dude. That's one of those disorders that people have where it's like where they hear something sad and they get so sad that the opposite reaction comes out. So, right. like, I know people like my son is actually a little bit like that. My eldest, anytime she hears like really bad news or something terrible happens, he starts laughing. Starts laughing. Yeah. <laughs> you can go up to him and go, Hey, dude, I'm getting my right leg amputated. He'd be like, <laughs> I feel terrible for you. I mean, He'd kids like, go through a phase like that where they get in trouble too, right? Where they awkward yeah. laugh and could go yeah. through it. Yeah. yeah, I cry okay, when I'm really, really happy. So it goes oh, both do ways. You really? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I can't wait. Show for me you a Christmas commercial. A Christmas yeah. commercial will get me every time. Um, My buddy's mother. Um, they caught yeah. her one time. We were in high school, and we were in the mall, and someone fell down the stairs, and she was standing there laughing at them, and we had to go get her. <laughs> I'm I like, did you know? I said to my too. buddy, I said to my buddy Andrew, I'm like, did you know about this? And he goes, no, 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 no. I had no idea. I had no idea. This is all new. <laughs> she admitted to it later in the car on the way home that anytime <laughs> she ever seen anybody fall or <laughs> take a it was her laugh. Uncontrollable. <laughs> wow. um, yeah, so that wouldn't. That's just considered a disorder. Uh, these are like sexual uh, kinks, <laughs> like coprophilia, arousal to feces. Sounds terrible. Cuckolding. We dealt with that yesterday. Yeah. That's a female partner sleeping with another man to humiliate her male partner while he is aware of very popular. Is it is that is yeah, it's very popular. people there? I, I had no it's idea very, very until popular. Years ago, I had no idea that was a thing. Cause um mm. and then I was 
very confused about who initiated it. Like, yeah, can, can you explain the, the rules of cuckolding uh, real the quick? Videos I watch. Yeah, I know. You, I mean, the rule cool. the rules could vary, right? Everyone yeah. has their own boundaries and what have you. But the premise, the most simplistic form of it, is husband's in the corner. He's not allowed to participate. There may or may not be allowances on him jacking off, watching his wife be with someone else. And more often, the request is that the someone else have a bigger dick than the husband. It can also jam into some racial and age play and all kinds of fun stuff. Okay. If he's, right. if the cuck is dominant, it could be because he's instructing it to happen, like you're going to get fucked. Or if he's submissive, it might be you're going to watch this and you're going to like it. Just what if he's reading the times? And uninterested. And he's just a watcher. No, he's reading the times. He's not. He's not watching. I won't be surprised. I mean, that could be so part of the like dominant play because if she's trying to make her dom happy, she's trying to do good for daddy, and and daddy's like, I'm bored, and he's just reading his Forbes mag. She got to try harder. She got to perform more. You're not doing enough. Wow. I, I gotta get okay. So more. okay. So is the intention then <laughs> of cuckolding? Yeah. And this is my ignorance. Pardon me. Is the intention of cuck holding that the one spouse that's getting it, so in this case, the female. Juju, him. Him. No, he's, he's, it's he's his fetish. Or kink. It's his, no, but he wants to be cuck holded, right? Is yeah. that, am I getting this right? Yeah, like, yeah but the request or the, the intrigue or the fetish could be on either side. But is he to supposed to not like it, or is he supposed to pretend that he like? Is he supposed to really not want this? If or is turn he on, maybe pretend the that he doesn't want it. That's the question. <laughs> if I have. he's in, if he's the submissive of either the session, the play, or the relationship, um, then that's when like kind of the humiliation comes in, and he's not supposed to like it in that regard. Um, if she's like, "Oh, this is so much better than when you fuck me with that little dick," that's very different <laughs> from you know the BBC that comes in and throws it down till her back's broken, and then he feels less than the rest of the time. But a lot of people are aroused BBC, by things that are controversial. BBC. Yeah, but is that and so? Less the more than that he feels feeling shitty, part of the kink. Yeah, that's a question. Is yeah, but the, the more he than... feels shitty, the harder his dick will probably be. Yeah, that's what I said. It's for him a lot of times. Who the fuck? I. How this is what is that. Possible. The retro replay yesterday was all Pain about and this. pleasure is a very fine line. Pain and pleasure is a very fine line. It's why anything taboo is very erotic. Because you're not your your instinct is you're not supposed to be excited by seeing your wife get nailed. But what if all of a sudden you're in your mind thinking this is crazy, but your dick is like, woo! That'll it's a little bit happen. confusing. That would never <laughs> you don't know that. Me. No, I do know that. I 100% know that. I'm but if pretty I'm much ever sure in that of it too. Or even if the, the, the thing gets like, it's like, hey, I want to be with this, you know, what do you think? I'd be like, right. no, no, I, not only do I not, like, but what if she looked really fucking hot and you're like, this is better than any porno I've ever seen in my life? Like, it's look how no, gorgeous my no, wife is right now, just taking dick. Yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> but I'm, I'm literally right there. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, right there. But you don't get to be the observer when you're right there. All of a sudden now you have VIP seating. And what if you're like, holy shit, look at her. No, when I am right there, I can open my eyes and watch it. Like I that's the thing. It's like I'm there, I can <laughs> right. see. But like, that's POV. Need... Okay, that's yeah, we know we know this isn't your kink, Dean. <laughs> I don't even understand. Like I, when you're explaining it to me, I'm trying to understand. Is the I'm guy convinced I'm you have hidden guy, kinks that you don't guy, know about? The guy wants <laughs> No, but the guy wants this, this is what I'm saying. I like, had no idea what this guy wants. wants to feel. He wants like to, his he wife wants is, to he wants to feel terrible about whatever. himself. Yeah. That's what makes it. I don't think it's that he I mean, we don't want to make the man suicidal, right? We don't want him to feel so bad about yeah, himself that, that his, he's going to die. If that gives you a boner, then you got you got some mental issues. But humiliation does give a lot of people arousal. It, it could be the same as being told you're a bad boy or you're a dirty slut. Like I originally, we're not supposed to call people those kinds of things, right? But if you're a pervert, when you're fucking me a certain way and we're just playing that game that day, it can be super arousing. I mean, it's not really kosher to call people daddy either, but people find it hot, including me. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Call someone a bad little girl. It doesn't mean it literally. <laughs> you think, <laughs> but do you like, think after, that, that's the play. Do you think after cuckolding week, you could do gerontophilia week? 
that, the, the, well, the cock we do we cock holding sessions. Do no, you? we okay. can do them with our couple okay. sessions. Yeah. Okay. If someone doesn't want to participate and they want to be the watcher, it's right. super easy to do in a couple session, man or woman. It's happened both ways where they sit in the corner and they just want to watch, watch him get his service or watch her get a massage and get a body. Do, you, and, do you provide the dude huh? or d does do no. they have to bring the dude in? They yeah, come in as a couple. Good, uh, the male they come, come in as a couple. Bring in the lefty from the bullpen. <laughs> hey, we don't have one. <laughs> No, no, hey, they come Juan, in as a couple. In here. Here's an interesting question. Hey, Juan. Yeah. Uh, here's an interesting question. Are there <laughs> make a males? And I'm only asking you this because it's like, okay, we just introduced a guy to the equation here. Are there male <laughs> rub and tug strip joints? There are, in, in well, yes, no, are. in general, not straight ones. There's gay ones. Oh, there's, bath there's, houses. There's you're gay talking queer about. massage. Well, and massage parlors as well, not licensed okay. body rub. But they they operate either holistic or unlicensed. Same setup, massage tables, sure. massage and a hand nothing, job that usually nothing, leads to a lot more. for the straighties. There's like there's no there's no like, for like women no to get men yeah. to massage them. No, yeah. it's funny because guys guys often when I talk to like a stranger and they ask what I do and I bring it up and they're like, oh, I've always wanted to open one of those for women and I'm like, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> because <laughs> they envision it like they would want it to be which is yeah. the client's experience right it's not going to be a bunch of hot broads showering you with money being like please lick my pussy and let me go home afterwards it's not gonna I, happen uh, that way. i was i was listening to a podcast i can't <laughs> even remember what it was hang on is it sort of story. like is it sort of like uh, the people that go topless <laughs> province shouldn't the same way that if you open up a, like an all male rubbing it's tuck. like logging into people of walmart <laughs> people's walmart okay. no i i remember there's, listening there's to this regular podcast people out there. and this yeah. story was quite funny this this um, husband was talking about her wife about his wife and she came home after a massage therapy and went you're not going to believe what happened <laughs> this one guy was promoted through this friends group and everybody went to him and she went, she thought, oh, well, he's a great masseuse. So she finally took their advice and went and he tried to do something to her. And she's yeah. like, hey, and he's like, what? I, <laughs> this is this is what it's, I do. It's, and it's, so it's she left, deal. she phoned the place and complained. And the, the owner was like, we've never had anyone complain about whatever his name was. Juan, we'll call him Juan. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> call him Juan. Um, <laughs> so it was well known between all those friends group. Dude, that's a big thing. Like yeah. there are a lot of registered, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. No, this was in M? the states, Emily. I no, yeah. I, I I'm, I'm going to tweak it a bit. I know two. Okay, I'll just tell you. I know two women. Okay. That yep. both have um diff they're different masseuses, mm -hmm. but that was introduced into the masseuse patient relationship a couple of months in and right. as an offer and the offer meant extra money and these two lovely ladies pay for it enjoy it he leaves women are no different than us i think sometimes that's what i think in some respects okay. there was a bit of a TikTok trend of these videos going around of men like rmts or whatever giving very erotic massages to women acting like this was a popular service. And of course the comment section goes crazy. The you know housewives are like, where do I get this? Men are like, this is bullshit. I'm never sending my wife for a massage again. And they're like freaking out. And then lo and behold, it came out the two of the most popular accounts. It was all an act. It was paid, like friends were paid to be in these little videos. And it was just like a ruse. It was just a thing to get views and make money off, off of TikTok. But a lot of men thought, oh, great, I can do this and have started a business. Some of them struggle to get clients. Some of them don't. I guess it depends on what they look like and what their skills are. Um, but for most RMTs, like registered massage therapists, it's a risk to their license and therefore their career if they offer sexual services. Now, if they're not registered, sure, then they're no different than any other massage parlor, massage girl, independent worker out there. Um, the, the irony is though, is that for hot women, if you're, if you're good looking and you're gorgeous, instead of paying a man $300 to do exactly that, you could make $300 and 
do exactly that. So why wouldn't you just work in one? It makes no sense. Interesting. You've in, you've you have you've life hacked this. You've turned yeah. these women's dirty little massage secrets into a golden opportunity mm -hmm. to pad their revenue. <laughs> this I'm is the asshole be that harder. goes in the comment section, and I'm like, meanwhile, my staff get paid three hundred and sixty dollars for this service. <laughs> my DMs blow up. <laughs> three sixty. Uh, I mean, for like an hour, a little on the service. Yeah. Did you sure you don't need a guy? Fifty-one, <laughs> Arctic blonde, sixty an hour. I'll Middle age, silver fox. That's Comes what you can call. <laughs> <laughs> you can call the service. No, but I'm serious. Like Middle age the, snack. Emma, Emma rub downs. I'm done, rub Dean, and I just got this stupid T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a rubby from Dino. And by the way, is the Dean deal still available at Muse? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Uh, what, you, what, if, what all you have again? to do is get into her DMs. That's all you got to yeah. do. Her DM us on any platform. Yeah. Tell us you heard us on the Dean Blondell show. And it's 50 bucks off any 45-minute session. And discreet. They'll meet you where you need to be met. They'll bring in whatever door you want to be brought into. It's, it's, it's therapeutic, deal. dude. It's therapeutic. This is what people don't understand. Like, we have fun. Emily likes to turn it into a thing with, like, you know, yeah, race car bed week. Today was a good show. Like, it would, like we learned some stuff. We I, dug I, it. I, have, really I have one more treat for you guys because I came with two Eclipse sex facts for you. Yeah, because, hang on, before we go, the okay. Eclipse is tonight. No, so it's Monday, right? Monday night, yeah. I I don't know if you guys have read about it. We're apparently not going to be able to see it in this area of the world. Oh, boo. I yeah. thought we were going to get a good shot. Well, I did I too. You but were too. Like, no, I thought let me Niagara Falls up. was yeah, going to be like. Oh, fuck. They declared a state of emergency in Niagara Falls a week ago. Did you hear about this? I heard that. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. of this. Because they were worried too many Honest people to God, were going to show up. State of fucking emergency in Niagara Falls. They're like, there's going to be too many people here. What are we, what are we going to do? Yeah. Uh, it, because everything's booked. It was just such a such a woke ass thing to do. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but to your point, let me. I'm just going to read this to you. This is this is unbelievable. I don't know. If um, I'm not interested in this at all. That they're worried the weather forecast for the solar eclipse in Ontario mm. is going to is going to suck. Bitter rains and the threat of snow this week. Obviously, yeah. we got some yesterday. Uh, we're getting our first total eclipse and Kingston, Brockville, kind of that corridor from southern Ontario all the way up are like on this perfect path. And apparently most yeah. of it is going to be covered by and the only time it. you're going to see this in 400 years. Look at that dork with those glasses on. He so <laughs> I saw a Jeez. funny I mean, meme it's better than the orange dork who just stared right at it last time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Trumpy. Um, I, heard, I saw a funny meme and it was talking about the, about the eclipse and it was saying every year that this comes out, you're told that it's never going to happen again for 400 years. And then a fucking right. year later, <laughs> We're talking about the next eclipse that we're never going to see for 400 years. Not only, not only, Every time. They, not only they told us that this uh, is never going to happen for 400 years, and I've seen three of them, so apparently it, it has. Um, they're also they're also warning you to keep your pet safe during the eclipse. Put, put yeah, because they shouldn't look at it either, right? <laughs> I think that's the point. <laughs> what, what happens to your eyes? Does it does it burn your retinas or something? I, I, uh, I, I think your dick falls. I'm guy question. Something like that. Okay. All right. uh, with guys, your dick falls off. With girls, <laughs> I couldn't tell you. I just heard that with guys, <laughs> your your wiener falls off. Um, that was and terrible. I, I, it was funny because I said to uh, my significant <laughs> other, "I'm like, what are the chances we connect?" During the eclipse. canoodle, yeah. <laughs> what are the chances we could canoodle during the eclipse? And we're like one of those people that can say, What were you doing during the eclipse? We were canoodling. We were canoodling. And I got this one. <laughs> no. <laughs> no? No coitus for you. No eclipse coitus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, well, there seems to be mixed opinions. Okay. Because I Googled this last night because you told me about it. And I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh, wait a second. In Hindu folk folklore, they say don't do it because there's so much additional energy, solar energy and all the things that happen with an eclipse and the magnets and all this stuff that you're too, you're almost too open at that point. There's too much energy going on in the world. The last thing you should be doing is energy exchange with somebody else. However, 
<laughs> However, <laughs> astrologists and psychics disagree with that theory and think if you're coming through a new phase, which is usually what a lunar eclipse is about, that you should be in the throes of passion when that happens. So you carry that energy through the retrograde that we're in right now. And I was like, hmm, I would like to see that thought over Jello. I'm going to need to go. I got to <laughs> smoke some weed. <laughs> That's and always my solution. <laughs> Interesting. So, uh, so losers that don't know Start anything about my this, own herbs. The, sp the spirituals, if you will, are like, mm -hmm. it's bad for your energy if you have sex because you're yeah. putting too much into the world. By the way, that makes no, so much. makes no physical sense. Don't you want all the energy? Yes, you do. So you True. get all the energy, so you should but do it. Penetrative intercourse is an energy exchange. Yes, it is. So the there's lots not of the way I, I do it. Wow, the way I do it. There's very little wow. energy exchange. It's like okay, he's on his back. Oh, yeah. Lord, am I sweating? Do you see a bead of sweat? My, my back sweating. Can you? Uh, well, second, like, oh, I'm, I'm 51. You're gonna do the. You're gonna need to do the majority of the work here. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, so back to that. So they're saying too much energy might make you crazy. So don't have sex. Is that the idea? They don't want people going nuts. And the premise being that there's already too much um, shifts in, like you know how all the people that go to like blow an Stonehenge for a solstice and all those things, all about solar energy and lunar stuff, and then the magnets and all these weird. Yeah, it's so I, I'm not a big dumb. into that kind of stuff, but no. whatever. Like I, the chakra, I found the two did you do sides the chakra interesting. and the crystals and the energy and the thing. Right. The, yeah, and so yeah, you're already almost in a vulnerable state. So you shouldn't be engaging in that. If anything, you should be mindful, you should be restful, and you should meditate Bullshit. and be like be one with the earth and the energy at that point. Yeah, the other flip coin is the astrology side that's like, no, get get to it. Do the do. Be in the throes of passion, right? And that, that orgasmic energy and those good feels and good vibes will stay with you. There's, there's the eight limbs of, Team of yoga. <laughs> I know what and I'm doing. Emily, Emily, there's there's the eight limbs of, <laughs> of yoga uh, theory, the yamas and the niyamas. And there yep. is one section in there about sex. It's called the wiener? Is it called the um, wiener? At, well, no. it's, it starts with an E. I can't I can't pronounce it. It's oh, no, it's just, it has an E in it. It's wiener, I believe. No, no, <laughs> no. It starts with an E. And oh. there is like... <laughs> constant disagreement on what it means because it it's it's one of the it's one of the eight limbs where you're not supposed to do it right there's like mm. the, the four you're supposed to do and the four you're not supposed to do well, it's got to be and it's, right. and it's it's under <laughs> abstinence but they but like the community can't even agree Agreed. on whether or not it means yeah get it on right so this conversation right. is very <laughs> similar to that conversation and it's interesting that you you sort of in your Google search ended up on the Hindu side of, of the equation. Yeah, because, I was curious, yeah. like, what's the mojo behind this? Is there like a taboo? Is there a stigma? Is there some like, you know, conspiracy theory? I was like, well, what do people think about, you know, orgasm at like at the peak of, the <laughs> like, there's gotta be something cosmic happening there. So I dug in a little bit. That would be really good planning if you can do that. Yeah. Listen, right at the moment of the eclipse. Listen, if you're skilled enough, you could do that. Well, I'm going to give it the old college try. Hey, <laughs> I can talk you through it. <laughs> Here, guys, yeah, you what you're going to do. <laughs> and then he's going to, and then you're going <laughs> to. And then you're going to grab it. And you're going to lift right. up the thing. And then you're Pull twice, the stare at the moon. <laughs> That's when you grab the battery cables because yep. it is fetish week. <laughs> it is. <laughs> uh, Emily. News on the mic, name of your podcast. What's on your podcast yes. this week? What do you and Riley have for us this week? By the way, do oh, you goodness. Get it? Yeah. Oh, shit, my memory. Um, Wednesday on the Patreon, we dropped an episode about masturbation, which is <laughs> hilarious. We do our first ever toy review, and we tell our personal stories about the first time we ever masturbated. It gets really spicy. <laughs> It's weird. It's That's really the weird. Uncensored Patreon. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah I know. You got to subscribe. <laughs> I don't know if you I remember. Subscribe and you got to pay for it. It's greasy and saucy. Uh, and uh, it is very, very that. funny. And it is very yeah. honest and open. And you educate. <laughs> You've also got a YouTube version that you yes. take some of the grease out of. Which is we do a little awesome. snippet for everybody that we call small potatoes that we'll put on our YouTube channel. So you get a little preview 
a few little small potatoes. And then you have to go get the whole the whole baked potato from yeah. PC. <laughs> With sour That's cream right. and bacon bits. Love Chives. it. Loaded. Yeah. Loaded. Uh, make sure you download the, the podcast. <laughs> make sure you subscribe anywhere you muse on the mic. Podcast. Muse Massage Parlor. Dean. The Dean Deal. Just ask them for the Dean yes. Deal or Riley for the Dean Deal. Get in their DMs. Go to the contact section of their brand new beautiful webpage. Check out the Ooh. muses. Check out the schedule. Check out the weeks. But more importantly, download and subscribe. Make sure you take advantage. These girls are awesome human beings on top of being educators and advocates great communicators Emily, awesome. very entertaining always love great it. to have you my love <laughs> always a you. pleasure gentlemen thank you good to okay. see you em. Emily, we'll see you next muse massage spa 1290 finch avenue west i learn a lot from her i enjoy her she's awesome I, she's fun i do like her yeah you know what it is no judgment is it we can live in a judgment free world wouldn't that be nice she's also on the pleaser side of the um equation in my like theory she definitely wants people to she be happy big, yeah it runs a business that pleases people men yeah. specifically actually yeah 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 so and that's um, not a bad thing right like could no. you imagine me as a teacher like teaching high school no it just doesn't work dude you'd right? be arrested for murder before spring break uh i don't know if i'd make it to labor day like if I worked, <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. I've said this before, and I'm not encouraging violence on the youth of today, but there is no yeah. chance in hell that I would be able to sit in a classroom with a bunch of 12, 13 year old kids and not choke the life out of one of them within, I'd say, two, three days. So it's really strong. Whenever, whenever I hear, honestly, whenever I hear anybody talking about teachers needing more money or wanting more money, I'm like, give, give them you. all the money. Give yeah. them every like if you are if you're mad at teachers i don't know what's wrong with you i don't know I, show us on the doll where the teacher touched you because it's serious seriously the worst thing that i i see all the time teachers and nurses they're mad at teachers and nurses i'll tell you they what do that doll enough money no they're right but that doll that you speak of would get a hard workout at a catholic school anyway uh before we get to that i want to quickly uh bring something to everybody's attention saw this video before we get to the locker room retro replay of the day yeah uh which is a good one brought to you by our friends at art and roofing systems listen sometimes i like to give a psa here for the fellas right you know we started talking today in the podcast about personal responsibility self-awareness the perception of life when you go through We've been hard doing things. That a little bit lately yeah, absolutely we got to help yeah. people i'm gonna help them again with a little aesthetic okay okay this is important now I know I have a full luscious head of Arctic blonde hair. Get I get it. Thin. No, it's not good. You, you're going from a forehead to a six head at least. Yeah, no, no, it's going back into just the fox ears. And dude, I'm okay with it. I'm okay. With, I'm not trying to hide. You should this. start not, putting advertising on that. I don't. Home. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Take your hat off for a second. We'll see who has I got the an eight billboard. Head. You got it. I got an that. eight head. It's not even close. Um. But but I'm letting this do what it does. I'm not trying to fool anybody with it. I'm not getting created with gel and a comb. You're very Nothing. lucky. Yeah, very fortunate, beautiful hair, middle-aged snack. Everything's great. Uh, this gentleman's 30. I'm going to play a video. 30, okay. And this goes out to every man, George Springer, center fielder, right fielder for the Toronto Blue Jays included. Hits leadoff, by the way. They need to fucking pick it up. Bad start to the season. Um, Same thing happened last year, didn't it? Yeah. If you have this type of thinning, ridiculous hair, stop trying to fool everybody. Don't do the comb over. Don't do the paint. Everyone still knows. Case in point, let's watch do this together. Do, do the Part two. He was tired of everyone telling him to go bald. So he told me to save him. He paid me $150 for this haircut. I was nervous for his reaction at the end. Can you see what he's saving here? <laughs> here comes the airbrush. The old airbrush hair on the scalp. You gotta make a border. And you gotta somehow cut whatever's going on back there. And you gotta try to make it look like try to make it look like it's blended in. Yeah, you gotta shave the entire forehead because the hair migrates into your eyeball. Um and there you go. 
And as I watched this gentleman try to, like he gave someone 150 bucks for this, and then he puts on a little, little hair dust. Thickener. Little, and then he puts on some black hairspray. And the end product is just as stupid, if not worse, than when he walked in and paid $150 for that hair. Lachlan Cross. Thank you for not being him. I, Please tell your I other friends. Don't started do losing my hair when I, my first daughter came along. Twenty seven. I panicked. Yeah. I had no idea how to be a father. I I never really uh, thought that that was going to be something that I excelled at, and I proceeded to lose my hair immediately. And it just made its way back. It's kind of stopped. I, I I don't shave my head, and I'll tell you why because. I've done it a couple of times and I don't think the look is that appealing. Like I, I look like I'm, I, I've got a natural childbirth shaped head. Like it's, a you cone? can tell someone pulled me out. There may have been some pushback. So I've got to just, I just, I got a just visiting. You got vagina shaped head. head. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Just. And so when I go bald, I just look like a knob, like a complete knob. So I keep a um, little bit of hair, and then do, once, but, but once every couple of weeks, I just fine. trim it right down. You're fine. You don't have to go totally bald because what you're not doing is creating an optical illusion with 38 hairs. No. Right? I feel bad for guys that lose, like, they look like this at 22. I don't. I don't. And yeah. I'll tell you why I don't. Because you're not going to beat it, like, ever. No, you can't. And trying to beat it, you're going you're gonna to spend maybe 100 grand if you want to do it naturally. The hair plugs, everyone knows, never do those. A rug. The rug, stop it. Are you kidding me right now? Every I know time a you walk of guys the street, everybody's rug. staring at you when you walk by. You look you look legitimately like you have a beaver pelt on your head. We all know. Absolutely. It yeah, you're, you're you're totally right. It's good I advice. Know. It actually Thank is you. decent advice for people. I, I just mean, for my fellas out there today. I just want to tell the fellas, just let it go. Yeah. You yeah. lost. You it's not your fault. You know, I got I, my eldest guy. He's starting to go thin right here. He's 26 years younger than me. I'm like, it's all good, Let dude. It, don't yep. worry. And you know what he said to me? He goes, I don't give a shit. Good I'm going to rock him. this pool cue. I'm like, boy. Yeah. Yeah. And you know why? He, you know some why? guys look good, Paul. Raised him right. He looks great, Paul. Anyway, yeah. See, I'm yeah, you got to look. You got good love. looking kids. Yeah, you I do. You do too. Boys. We yeah. both do. Yeah. Congratulations. My daughters did not get any of their looks from me. They just got all my crazy, which is. Yeah, that's okay. That's a whole nother conversation. We'll bring him back for that. Yeah. <laughs> Try and unpack some things. Speaking of which, uh, let's unpack today's locker room retro replay of the day brought to you by Arden Roofing Systems. Lachlan Cross, what do we have today? We used to do this thing, and this is one of the first times we ever did it. Uh, we used to slow Jimmy down. And I tried it on my voice. I tried it on Grant's voice. I tried it on Phil. We met Phil last week. I tried it on George. It never really worked, but for whatever reason, it's Jimmy's delivery or his like his tone or this. It just works so well. So this is one of the first times. I think it might have been the first or second time that we slowed Jimmy down. Um, and it well, here it is. The lock, the lock, lock retro, retro, retro play. play. For those of you who do not know, James P. White. Our little buddy on the show didn't have a traditional path in radio. In order to give him a little bit of time on his own so he can gain some confidence as a broadcaster, Boss was was nice enough. We kind of berated him into it as well. He kind of forced him into this. Yeah. We gave him a show on Saturday and Sunday nights, midnight to 2 a.m. So he does a voice track. Mm -hmm. He doesn't come in at midnight on Saturday nights. He's not here live, no. No. Monday or Tuesday when we come back, we take a cut from his weekend performance mm -hmm. and then we do a quick little air check we just give it a listen yeah i did get some snapchats of people listening to the james p white experience on really the weekend, by the way yeah why that's <laughs> what is wrong it's with a you great people? show people it's... get drunk and then make terrible choices right <laughs> that's a good point no good decisions are made after midnight <laughs> so this is a clip from your saturday show Yes. Okay, and you're talking about your love of chess. This go. is Not Ready for Primetime with James P. White. Today is National Chess Day. <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to play checkers <laughs> with my dad, and then he taught me how to play chess. You really sound drunk. 
I really love playing the game. She played it normal <laughs> I wouldn't speed call instead my of slowing it down. We didn't touch so this. A chess master, <laughs> but I do enjoy the game. And don't forget, <laughs> coming up at noon today, from noon till six, That's we have Doing a little station maintenance with here. Derek Allen. You definitely don't want to miss that. I always leave the pauses in, too. <laughs> All right. Nice work, Jimmy. Honestly, uh, we Why we would so hear, uh, we would get guys, they'd be driving in and they'd text, they'd hear something that we did on the show and, and something Jimmy said, and they'd go, you got to slow that down. And we would literally, I'd go into the logger and I'd rip it out and I'd slow it down and play it back that. And we did that a hundred times and oh. Jimmy hated it every time. No shit. <sighs> And it was, I tried to do Grant and I, even when I thought that we kind of messed up something, mm -hmm. I tried, but it never, it sounded. You didn't sound <laughs> as disabled as he did? When you oh, did such a, yeah. It became a thing on the show. Yeah. 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 Um, can't imagine how he's doing now after that. Does he need counseling? Did he get, did you get him some counseling after you did that to him? No? Give me some time to talk about that. If you don't. All mind. right. <laughs> Gonna have to go back and undo years. He's just literally waking up, just hearing his slow voice in his head with nightmares after a break like that. Like I used to wake up all the time when I was on the radio. Yeah, I would wake up literally to the nightmare of not being able to talk. You ever do this? You wake you in a dream. You'd have a nightmare that you that you were tired. Nothing different. would come out of your mouth. And then the other dream I would have all the time when I was on the radio because it was just like chaos and stress and anxiety all the time. In that I never business. had dreams. It never like ends. And I would wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat because all the music was gone. All the commercials were gone. I had to sing all the songs, do all the commercials and the breaks. <laughs> Legitimately. I mean, like, I remember one of my nightmares just doing Smells Like Teen Spirit. With the lights up, it's less dangerous. And then I'm like, that was Nirvana. But I was singing in my dream. And then I was like, here's some commercials. But I would, like, then do the commercials you in know my what dream, too. I've been dreaming about lately. I never had any dreams like that. I, I don't think I stressed out about the job like you did. I wasn't was in a high test. Anyway, um, yeah. I, I've been having a dream lately that I'm eating my own clothes. What is that? The serious. Like I'm like yeah. out and I'm just sitting there eating, eating my shirt, mm. like chewing on it, digesting it. Like it's a meal. Have you ever had a dream where you're eating your clothing? Um, one person says what, no, but I have Reddit? eaten. I have eaten lipstick. <laughs> uh, dream interpretations: to dream that you are eating your clothes signifies loss, loneliness, and depression. That's not great. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I'm good. I actually feel really good. Maybe it's I the mean, loss. Maybe it's the loss of your job. But a month ago, when you got fired, you know, what? might be that. That might be manifesting itself in your brain. Who knows? You lost yeah. something that was important to you, right? That might be it. I don't believe in any of that shit either way. I don't. I do. Oh, yeah. I, we could go on dreams, man. I'm All telling right. you. All right. Well, we'll have that. I, well, you know what we do? Let's get a dream analysis on it because I want to talk about that dream that I had and this other dream that I had the other night where you and I were swimming and we realized we didn't have any clothes on and we started laughing and then cuddling. I don't know no, what that, that means. No, no, we great. didn't have. You didn't have that dream, and we're not talking about that with anybody. And I really wish you hadn't have brought it up. I was naked. You were naked. We were in a swimming hole. I realized you didn't have pants. I didn't have pants. We had a whole box of Slim Jims on the shore. We went, we said we were fishing. We came back with no fish. Too many details. And then the car broke down to the side of the road yeah. and you got killed and I didn't want to go home. Wait, that's broke back mountain. <laughs> we went on All a right. fishing trip, came back with no fish or pants. By the way, a couple of things. Yeah. Um, the Arden Roof Systems Charity Golf Tournament. Yes, I just sir. want to get this out. That's happening July 5th. Looking for sponsors still. He's got a couple of spots, although they're filling up quickly. Um, and also, uh, you can sign up as a golfer or as a team of golfers. Ardenroofsystems.com at the ranch in Edmonton. One of the best tournaments of the summer. Tomorrow, got a little sort of monster pro wrestling Arden Roof Systems Charity Golf Tournament. 
promo video that I recorded at the lair, which is where the guys from Monster Pro Wrestling create all their magic. So we'll have that on the show tomorrow, along with um, the owner, founder of Sea Change uh, Brewing Company here in Alberta. His name is Ian. Ian. Yes. So I'm looking forward to that. And Monster Smart Pro dude. Wrestling, yeah. very cool, very cool man. And uh, yeah, he just actually s- jumped on as a sponsor for that Grease Fire show that I was telling you about. Mm-hmm. Monster Pro Wrestling, tomorrow night, Alberta Avenue Community Center, 25 bucks at the door, 7 o'clock bell. I am going. Uh, Monster Pro Wrestling is a Cryer Media client, so I'm going to go and check it out tomorrow. And uh, that's that's it. That's everything I got. Do you wrestling tomorrow? No, no. Long story. I, right. I'm really worried about Jimmy right now. We'll All talk right, we'll talk about Jimmy it later. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll talk about it later. All actually, right, Monster I, Pro I actually, Wrestling. Actually, I think you should get on the phone with him if I'm not. You want me to call him after? I'll call him after this. Yeah, I'd love to talk to him. Um, We will do that right now. Lachlan, great to see you, buddy. That was great a good to one today. You. It was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, I'm out of here. Talk to you soon. Thanks, brother. Lachlan Cross, anytime. At Lachlan Cross. Follow him on Twitter. There he is again. Oop, got him out now. There he is. He's gone. See you later, Lachlan. See you later, people. Thanks, everybody, for being a part of the show. As always, brought to you by our friends at Rome.auto. Listen, uh, buying a car is a pain in the ass. You lose money the second you buy it. Everybody knows that. You get locked into these five, seven-year deals. Some of them, but fucking 10-year car deal. So crazy. Uh, you don't need that. You know, you don't. You need to subscribe to a vehicle. One payment includes your insurance, routine maintenance, roadside assistance. It's brilliant. Rome.auto. Again, go to Rome.auto if you're in the GTA. Uh, these are good people. Great people. They want to get you in a car. And they don't want you to have to suffer through the ownership of that car. So you can turn it in anytime. Very flexible monthly plans starting in a month, going to 12. Uh, you can do two, whatever you want. doesn't really matter. Home delivery available. They've got an entire ecosystem of vehicles. You can browse for your cars. And again, you don't have to pay for insurance, routine maintenance, nothing. All you do is give them your credit card, one low monthly payment, boom, you're gone. And when you're done with the car, you can hand it back. Perfect for someone transitioning into a car. You want to try an EV? That's what I'm doing right now. These are, I'm a client. That's how I got to know these people. And now we're telling everybody about this new service, car subscription for the 21st century. Uh, and you can get $150 off right now with promo code Rome with Dean just when you sign up. $150, sign up, Rome with Dean. That's your promo code. Drive on your own terms, a car subscription from Rome. Don't buy, subscribe, insurance, routine maintenance, roadside, everything included. The only thing you pay for is fuel and you walk away when you're done. Uh, go to Rome.auto for more details. Rome with Dean is your promo code. Go do it. You're a genius if you do. Uh, speaking of geniuses, we've gotten a chance to know some that make software that the world needs desperately. Factcheck.io. Uh, a group of scientists, data scientists, computer scientists, journalists, they got together and decided they were probably going to have to fix something for everybody else. And you know, it's almost as simple as this, is that they have the ability to tell you about anything that you consume online in detail and to verify whether or not what you're reading, looking at, consuming, whether it's a video, picture, text, no matter what it is, story from any news outlet as to the veracity and the verification of the truth in that claim or any claim that they make and where it comes from and who did it. Pointing fingers is the best when it comes to this kind of stuff. It is the ultimate tie-breaking disinformation killer, factcheck.io. They need beta testers right now. You can go and sign up for the beta program. You can try and test it. They need you to help them kind of fill it out. And it's eating right now. The machine is called Eddie. Eddie is eating. Eddie is learning. And this will launch in the next couple of months. And uh, if you're, if I'm to believe what I saw and what I've experienced with their beta program, uh, this will change the way that people actually uh, look at information, consume information. It'll put agency back into your hands. So go and sign up for the beta test. Go and follow them on Twitter at factcheck.io. Factcheck.io is the website, F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K.io, F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K.io. Do you believe? Also brought to you by our friends at CanTorque, makers of rugged, hardworking torque wrenches uh, the world over. Leading industrial tool experts offer you the very best in sales and service, calibration, maintenance, and custom fabrication. 
of industrial torque tools. Every solution for any tool rental, calibration, service repairs, or any fabrication or distribution opportunities, they have everything under one roof, all their products on their website. Website's brand new. Go to cantorque.com today and check out their information. Also, his new podcast called Talking Torque, part of the Tagliani Pinty's NASCAR racing team. Uh, Colin and his group make rugged, hardworking torque wrenches for heavy industry around the world, nuclear, railroad, heavy machinery, forestry, and they have unparalleled expertise and design experts that offer those solutions to anybody around the world. I believe he just got back from China. Uh, yeah, he makes torque wrenches nobody else does that do a job nobody else can figure out, and he proudly manufactures here in Canada, puts a little maple leaf on all of his stuff too. He's awesome. He's a good man. Great company. Canadian made, Canadian owned, Canadian operated, Canadian manufactured. Go to cantorque.com today for more information. And as well, not that we need to tell you, brought to you by Muse Massage Spa. Right now, if you get a hold of Emily or Riley, go to their DMs, uh, head to the contact portion of their webpage, Muse Massage Spa. She'll give you the Dean deal. Ask her about it. And it's fetish week all week this week and the entire month. So check them out at Muse Massage Spa. Also, on top of that, uh, download their podcast. Muse on the Mic is the name of the podcast. You can get it on Patreon. You can get it on YouTube. And you can also download it anywhere you get your fine podcast. The Patreon one's cool, though. Totally uncensored. And you can follow them on social media, Muse Massage Spa. And as if we're not done there, you can go and visit them, 1290 Finch Avenue West. Have a great day, everybody. Appreciate you being here. Uh, don't forget everything you do is on YouTube. Go to crier.co for more details. YouTube has Crier Media and the Dean Blundell Show. Check those out. Rate, subscribe there. Same thing with the Apple iTunes, Google, Spotify audio versions of this podcast. We always appreciate your help and appreciate you spending time with us. Uh, we will see you tomorrow. And we got a big day tomorrow, too. And Lachlan said, yeah, yeah, we do. Got a couple of guests. We got a big announcement tomorrow. Uh, so rate, subscribe, make sure you join us, subscribe anywhere you get our podcast, Dean Blundell show, Cryer media. Thanks for following. Thanks for hanging out with us. We will see you tomorrow.